Hello, welcome back to Let's Talk Sports with Rick, my good friend Jack. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How's it going? I'm maintaining, at least trying to. You're doing well. Yeah. Uh, for all you viewers that watch us, you know what this weekend is. Thursday, the NFL draft, Thursday through Saturday, which is a big event out in Cleveland on ABC, ESPN, some of the streaming services. And then I think for me, the biggest event is uh, the Kentucky Derby. It's something I look forward to every, every year and uh, try to figure it out. And, you know, again, last year we had the winner and we're trying to give out the winner this year. We got some great ideas, but let's, let's start off with get a couple things out of the way. What we're going to do, get a couple, couple other sports quickly out of the way, then we're going to um, accentuate the draft and, and the Kentucky Derby. Dodger Padres series. Yes. That's become very, very competitive yeah. between the two of them. Padres lead four to three in the series now. So one of my, one of my questions for you is um, the whole celebration when, when, uh, when hitters hit home runs. What's your thought on it? Like me personally, if a pitcher get, gets you out, a, a, good, a good hitter out, they should, be, they should be able to celebrate. Same thing, a hitter gets a good home run like Tatis did, he's supposed to be able to celebrate. Why are these get off my lawn guys upset with it? It's a it, it, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know, Tatis was clowning, you know, uh, when he hit a home run. I think I hit five home runs in that four game series. That kid is 22 years old. They're saying he's the best player in baseball. I don't know, Ronald Acuno Jr. looks pretty good over there in Atlanta. But, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's crazy. I mean, actually, baseball right now, I was watching the sh uh, show about the statistics so far, and there's more strikeouts in baseball, more than ever in history. The strikeouts, there's not as many walks. Pitchers are really dominating the game. That being said, there's been some prolific home runs here, some, you know, 486 feet, uh, I think is the longest one. Uh, I don't know, remember who it's by, but maybe it's uh, Stanton. But there's been some long home runs, but pitching is dominating. They haven't, they've never had so many shutouts. And you talk about domination. Think about this. Arizona plays a doubleheader against Atlanta the other day on Sunday. Arizona gives up one hit in two games. One of them is a no-hitter. Uh, seven inning no hitter because double headers are seven innings now. And in the first game they gave up they gave up one hit. Atlanta scored no runs in two games of a double header. Arizona dominates. I'm like, are you kidding me? It, this is this is baseball. So yeah, I guess these guys get excited because they hit home runs, you know, and, and they want to flip the bats and, and I, they I should. Actually, well, I hate it. I, I just like my whole thing has always been act like you've been in the end zone. No. That's how I've always been my whole no, life. Like, but that, but, but that's act how, like you've been in the but, but that's that's how it used to be. Whereas, remember, like, perfect example is like in the NBA, you did not shoot threes. Now, you sh every team is shooting threes. It, it it has evolved. My thing is, you celebrate. Why not? Because right now, pitchers are striking act like out. you hit a home run before. Act like you've been in the end zone. That's just my whole thing. Uh, I, and, you know, not to bounce the football. I, I always love a guy who hands the ref the ball. And I say, that's my guy. I don't need this celebration. Baseball. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I do not need Tatis going around first base and covering his eye and say I hit it out with one eye and all that. And he's clowning Trevor Bauer because Trevor Bauer of the Dodgers, he's got this thing now. He's, he's a weird fella. He pitches some pitches with one eye closed. So it's his new thing. Well, you know, he's messing with him. And that's why he said I hit – I hit the ball out but with that, one eye. But that's them going back and forth, and that's that friendly yeah, rivalry. That's fine. That's I don't know if it's friendly. It's a friendly, friendly rivalry where, guess what? You think, you think he's going to come out again, and, and Bauer is not going to make sure that, that he, he gets him out? Yeah. But, that's, that, but that's, the, that's the whole premise of the game, being able to, to go back and forth. It's like, hey, we're, I'm going to tell you, I want better pitching when it comes to uh, – Playoff, playoff baseball, I want better pitching. The, the, pitching, is very, the pitching is outstanding right now. Yes. The statistics are proving it. And but averages just, are way down and strikeouts are way up. And walks are way down. So really, pitching is dominating the game Because right guys, now. Are, guys are going home run. And well, then well, it's so home. much true. It's just like in the NBA. You know, what is it they all celebrate? When you slam in somebody's face, 
when you give somebody a facial, they they just get so crazy over that. And I guess it brings it. Yeah, because Rick, nobody wants a facial. I always been a good, quiet athlete that just did his thing, and that's the one I prefer. I I, I prefer a Mike Trout who hits a home run and just goes around the bases, who's the best player in baseball. And his buddy Otani is really good right now. That but, that that's, but that's but that's uh, they, that's how they, they choose. Just, they just run the bases. But but why? But, but oh my! So then somebody would be like, "Oh, Trout is not. He's not engaging. He's not a team player." But he's but, but as far from it, that's just how he contributes yeah. to the team. And that's just what I prefer. Every so I don't criticize any of it. I believe you know if you if you feel that a guy celebrating a long home run, a guy celebrating a walk off home run, um, in in, in just dynamic fashion just goes over the top it's okay i'm not i'm not i'm not against it i'm just saying what i prefer as a, when i was an athlete that's what i preferred and for athletes now that's what i prefer to act like you really are good enough to do that anytime you want i just feel like a guy when he celebrates is, is a guy who doesn't do it all the time but that's not true no but so anyways it, it, i'm, it, I'm it, not a celebration guy well it's just like in you know in the field of sales like you're telling me you don't celebrate after every win because there are so many times where you, you don't necessarily get the sale. So when you do get the sale, you do celebrate. And I and it's, it's, it's just like, oh, are you going to say act like you got the sale? You've been there before with the sale? Yeah. No, if every 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 situation is different. I'm going to celebrate every time I got a, good, a, a big sale or every time I, I do something well. Why not? Because it, 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 creates, an point. it creates a trickle effect where I like this feeling. I want to do it again. Yeah. And I want to do it again. You can continue to do so. So why shouldn't they celebrate? Let That's an celebrate. excellent point. But like you talk about sales, for me, and I, you know, I had, I was fortunate. I had an incredible sales career. I was the best of the best in my industry. You know, my whole thing was, if I got an incredible, huge sale and the company was so happy, I say, what's next? That was done. What's next? And then I privately would buy myself a new car or a new house. But that's how you. But that's how you. But nobody it. ever knew what I did. They, they saw the effect of it when I drove up in the. In the parking lot at the job, but I was never a guy like people would say, "Oh my but God, you just sold a ten million dollar job." Do you realize what that is? And I would be like, "Yeah, what's next?" Yeah, but you would go out and celebrate and buy yourself something nice. Privately, but, but, but that's you. And but, yeah. so, no, what is he going to go in the in the dugout? Neither and, is right or wrong. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely correct. It's, we all celebrate. It's, it's a great fun thing, and, and and I'm glad you brought it up. And you know, speaking of celebration, Thursday is going to be a big celebration for a lot of these kids in the NFL. They're going to be life changing, especially getting picked in the first round. Uh, they're going to be changing uh, franchises. You, you are some franchises are going to make big gambles and uh, you know, hate to use a baseball term, but strike out. Yeah, uh, I just you know, I I find it funny as we look at you know, here's the first few picks, and you know, of course, everybody Trevor Lawrence is going to. To going to Florida and he, he's going to be with Jacksonville and uh, he's already donated money to the city and he, you know him and his wife donated uh, to some type of fund so Trevor Lawrence is going there and, and, and then number two to the Jets is going to be Zach Wilson um, Jones is going to you know the 49ers are in love with Jones they say they're looking at a lot of quarterbacks but you know the but, top three guys are, but are some of the, solid some quarterbacks some of the experts actually say it might be Fields that's going to go to to Again, um, I think he's the best quarterback in the draft, and um, I don't I don't doubt doubt it. It's just a matter of because the way I saw him play at Ohio State, it was it was very incredible. Just yeah. just to see him out there, uh, it's almost like men playing with boys. Just the his way of like I never felt like they were ever out of a game ever. Yeah, I, what is he going to do next to to bring him back or? Can they stop him? I thought he was the best one, yeah. uh, despite even what Lawrence did and even him missing games and stuff. Uh, I yeah, like feels is a real deal. And again, you know, he's he's got the speed to run. He ran a four four in the in the pro day workout at, at Ohio State the other day in the four four. I mean, that's the best by a quarterback ever. Um, you look at his size; he's a very physical kid. Uh, you know, you look at Zach Wilson from BYU. He's highly touted, highly intelligent. And I think he'll do very well in New York. But when was the last time a quarterback did well with, with the Jets? I um, mean, Chad Pennington. Yeah. I mean, but I was so long did ago. Did he really do that good? No, because he was injured most of the time yeah. because uh, they had that fishnet um, O-line. Yeah. You know, and, and again, you go back to the Jets. I, I don't believe that their system and the way they, they coach and, and the way they manage there. I, I don't ever think – I don't think Sam Donald ever got a fair shot. And now you've got – 
Sam Darnold getting traded to Carolina and Carolina going to take fields, supposedly. So what are they doing there? Again, Sam Darnold, I believe, is a great quarterback. He doesn't get a chance. And these, these decisions are – they change people's lives. I think Sam Darnold is a good quarterback. I don't think he got a fair shake with the Jets. And it's looking like he's not going to get a fair shake in Carolina. Why do you say that? You think Carolina is going to pick a quarterback? They're going to pick Fields. I think Carolina is going to go with Fields. But and, you, and, then, think, and then there's going to be a real problem because – But Carolina, Carolina has the eighth pick. You, or, so you, they got the eighth pick, Carolina. So – so I you, think Fields is going to Carolina. So you don't think so you don't so you don't think Justin Field might go to um, might go to San Francisco instead? You think they're they're all set on Mac Jones? I think the top three, and we'll see it on Thursday. And you know, again, watch the draft; it's going to be fun. But I believe the top three are going to be Lawrence Wilson and, 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 and Jones, and then you know, I think the Falcons are really smart to take Kyle Pitts. Why? Great. Well, he's Why? a great tight. So he's a great tight end. He's probably going to be one of the best tight ends ever to play the game. Okay, that kid is a great. Okay, he, he runs like he runs like a wideout, and, and he's still got the ability to block. He'll go over the middle for so, you. So you need tight, great tight ends in the NFL. Well, right what now. what does what, what 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 does Atlanta need? Do they need more offense? It, not really. Atlanta needs so more then defense. Why, so then why go? Why? So then why would you pick? Just because he's the best player in the draft? Is that what you're saying? He's the best player at that? Um, he, I, he may be the best pick in the whole draft. He may be the biggest difference maker. So you're gonna, I, believe so him, you're, I believe him or Jalen Waddle are going to be the biggest. So, you're gonna, so basically, they're gonna, if, if they're going to win games, it's going to be – they're winning, what, 48, You're 46? right. Atlanta doesn't play defense. They have no defense. So why wouldn't you – I agree with either, you. Either, either in free agency, get, get a pass rusher, get, get a corner, uh, you know – do something with, with with your defense because Matt Ryan and and Atlanta had the best when it comes when it comes to completion when it when it came to um, attempts. Yeah. So well, I agree. why would you not? Hey, I agree with the defensive thing. Just look at the structure of last year. Um, Tampa Bay, yes, they had a good offense, but really their defense led to them having that great offense. And, and what did Tampa Bay have on on defense? It was so good. They had an adequate defensive line that was good, but they had incredible speed at linebacker. That so kid what, about, in. what about that edge rusher out of uh, Michigan? Oh, Quiddy Payne. Quiddy Payne. He is, he, why he, he's a pick, difference changer. So why wouldn't they go that route instead? Of, yeah. It, it's, he's, he's a legitimate pick. They got him like down in four. That's where, I, that's where I would go it, it, for Atlanta. How about the kid, how about the kid Parsons out, out of Penn State? You realize he ran a 4'3", 245 pounds, 6'4". He ran a 4'3", These athletes are getting more are you and crazy? better. And better. Let's think about that. The game of football now, the NFL. This kid from Penn State runs a 4'3", 245. He, he bet Justin Fields. He was confident. I saw the show about it. He bet Justin Fields. He said, I will, I will run a faster 40 than you. Faster 40 than you, Mr. Quarterback. And Fields is like, no way. And they had a private bet. I don't know what it was. They laughed about it, but, you know, it's, it's their deal. But that kid, Parsons, 4-3 to a 4-4. And, 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 again, Fields is, Fields is a great athlete, uh, I think, beyond being, you know, quarterback. He's, he's the best athlete of those quarterbacks. And, you know, I keep looking over this draft here, and I, I don't see Kyle Trask's name. I think he's a fine quarterback. I, I think he's better than Trey Lance. You know, everybody's touting Lance, you know, top 10 pick. Uh, you know, he's going he's gonna to go up there. Uh, you know, uh, North Dakota State, the guy's played 17 games. Uh, you haven't played enough football, man. You just haven't played enough football. But, you know, they're, they're touting this kid, and the Patriots won him. The Patriots won him. Also, the Broncos won him, too. The Broncos uh, won both, both of those teams are looking at him because, obviously, they're not going to get the, the Fields or the, uh, the Mac Jones or maybe even the Zach Wilson. You know, so so yeah. might, might as well get the best thing. But um, for me, he hasn't he hasn't played enough, and we've seen throughout the history of the NFL where when we don't when we don't see enough on, on paper, that quarterback t- tends to not uh, flourish. Yeah, one of the things that's interesting to me in this to me in this draft, I, I watched you know a lot of college football last year, as you know, 
Uh, I just think Najee Harris has just an incredible, incredible runner. And, and he's going to be a difference maker. And they got him way, way down. And the Dolphins picking him. Um, you know, the kid, Travis Etienne, out of Clemson, another great running back. Uh, they, they're pushing these running backs way back. And as you say, they get hurt so much that they, people don't invest. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't invest unless early. You, but unless you're they should invest early. Well, and but, Look at Barkley in New York. But that's exactly what Posey, the number two pick. That's exactly why. Um, and, and he's been hurt a lot of his career. But when he's running, he makes a difference but, but with the Giants. A, and he's a prime example of why teams don't want to invest that, that, um, that first-round pick into a, uh, a running back, especially, you know, top 10, unless it's a sure deal, which, which Barkley was supposed to be a sure deal. And he is. He just got injured. And it comes down to, um, I don't know, maybe protection. Yeah. Like we look at uh, you look at what uh, Cincinnati is doing. Cincinnati is taking care of it. Like for me, it's that uh, that kid out of uh, Oregon that they should be uh, picking up on the old line. Oh, yeah. um, Sewell, Sewell, Penny Sewell he, out of Oregon. Yeah. He he's gonna make a difference maker for him to um to protect their quarterback. You know, obviously, see how he got hurt. You gotta you gotta invest in that. Um, question: Who's the best wide receiver in the draft? And where do you um, – who do you think is going to go that, first? That's really, really a good question. Um, I think the kid Chase is going to go first uh, from LSU. Um, I believe Waddle from Alabama is going to go number two um, of receivers. And I believe the third receiver pick is going to be Smith. Uh, they're talking about Smith, Devontae Smith, not being big enough uh, to compete at a really strong level in the NFL. He's going to get hurt. Uh, people contend that Waddle was actually the better receiver before he hurt his ankle very badly, as you know. He was out most of the year and found his way to the championship, and we all saw that he played hurt. You saw he, but, waddled, uh, he waddled off the field. Yeah, he waddled off the field. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So, you know, I, that kid Chase, you know, he's got size, speed, great hands, deep receiver, you know, catches the deep ball. He's going to go first. Um, I still, I still am partial so, to Smith because I think he is – what I saw him do in that championship game against Ohio State before he got hurt and what I, what I saw him do all year. He won the high school. Uh, he's the best receiver in the draft. Forget about the size. You know, you got some small receivers down there in Kansas City that are doing pretty damn good. It, that's exactly, doing some pretty as soon, damn good things. As soon as you're taking a breath, exactly what I was going to come up uh, – uh, who I was going to mention in Tyree Hill – Tyreek Hill is not the is not the biggest uh, wide receiver, but guess he what? He sure is good. It's like 7-Eleven. He's always open. <laughs> yeah. So guess what? And I feel the same thing is going to happen with Devontae Smith. Um, Waddle's a great receiver. I mean, those, there's there's a lot of nice stuff to pick from there. There's a lot of nice stuff to choose from there. And and again, you know, Pitts is a tight end slash receiver. He he's going to be an impact guy. But those four guys are going to make an impact immediately in the NFL. You know, just like you say, some of these edge wrestlers and some of these cornerbacks, you look at this kid, Patrick Sertain Jr. Um, his father was a great football player, cornerback from Alabama. He's going to be a, a top 10 pick. That kid's going to be a difference maker. He's going to play a cornerback immediately and do well. There's a kid out of South Carolina. His name uh, uh, I'm missing right now, but another great cornerback. And, and these kind of guys are going to make difference. Uh, these, edge, right. these edge rushers. Horn, are, uh, out of um, Carolina? Yeah, Horn, that's the name awesome player is going to make a difference. And, you know, some of these linebackers, like the guy Parsons I mentioned, uh, there's a kid, another kid out of, you know, out of Kentucky called Davis. Um, he's going to be good. So you're right. I, I think you win football games first with defense. Uh, defense puts you in a position to win games, and you saw that with Tampa Bay throughout the playoffs. The defense put them in the position for that offense to go on the field and do well and gave them the confidence. Great NFL teams, great teams, period, start with great defense. And I think these people that continue to load up on defense, it's going to be tough this year. You've got to compete with Tampa Bay, who signed everybody back. Whoever Tampa Bay signs is going to have a tough time playing. It, it, they, they, they literally have their 22 starters back. But It's going to be tough to beat. But, but that means whoever they sign that goes to Tampa Bay has a great um, opportunity to be mentored by oh, all of these absolutely. guys, and by champions, no in a sense. No you know, all of them are signed by, so then you're getting, you're getting mentored great by champions. Great spot to land. So guess what? Even if what do they have, the 32nd pick? 
Who are they, who are they saying? Who are they saying that Tampa Bay is going to take? Safety. Yeah. Or O line. Yeah, safety or O line. Um, you know, it's it's again, you know, Baltimore. You think think about Baltimore. Of course, they're going to go with an L, another LSU receiver. They're saying Terrence Marshall. Well, we know that Baltimore's already got a good defense. So you can load up on offense. It's all about what you got. With the, you know, some of these fine defensive teams, you know, they can shore it up a little more and, and, and get some guys that come in to give players rest. But, you know, those type of teams like Baltimore in Tampa Bay, they're, they're going offense, man. They're going to be going offense. And they'll give Brady more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brady has great offense right now. It's just what you want to always give him is uh, – insurance policy like uh i forgot the rookie that they, he played with last year that came out of nowhere and we're like oh oh my god and you know throughout the season you were always talk, you were always um putting him on a pedestal and you know i'm like you know trying to like oh it's just a fluke and like you're like no um and a few games in like you see what they do is they they focus on certain guys just to get them comfortable and that's what they were doing throughout the entire the yeah. entire season and it's like but as you can see during the super bowl those guys weren't even weren't even like a part of the offense. No. It was all the guys that they that they 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 um they signed. Yeah, and, and you talk about receiver. Look at the difference maker that kid was in Minnesota. I mean, as a rookie, it was unbelievable. A lot of rookies were were, were prolific last yeah, year. Yeah, and it, it's 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 the way of the sport now. Rookies are are coming in in the NFL and making a difference, and they have to because guys get hurt so much. NFL is a big bad game, man. You got to be a bad man to play in the NFL. Absolutely, and, and, and they get hurt so. Anyways, this draft is going to be fun. It's Thursday night. Don't miss it. Um, you have your own ideas. Check in with us. Let us know. Um, before we end the show, we, we would be remiss if we didn't get onto the Kentucky Derby. We could talk about this NFL all day because, again, it's one of the games we love. Um, enjoy the draft and, uh, you know, enjoy our show and, and, and give us some of your ideas. But let's move over to the K Kentucky Derby quickly. What do you like? Who's going to win? So before we talk about on the Derby, let's talk about Friday. They have, we have a couple of races on Friday. We'll, we'll, let, let us know about Friday's race. Let's, well, you got the Kentucky Oaks, which is the female version of the Kentucky Oaks. you got a couple of, you know, top horses there. I, I like the horse travel column. Um, there's another horse search result and Malathret, Malathret. These are the three top horses in the female. Tra travel column is another Brad Cox horse. Brad Cox, uh, all day in Kentucky, they have stakes races all day that aren't even – on Friday and Saturday, there aren't even the two derbies. Um, that guy's a great trainer. So if you're if you're playing and watching, look for Brad Cox horses. Um, he does. He's a very very good trainer. He did extremely well in the Breeders' Cup this last year. But um, watch for Brad Cox. And you know the Oaks will be good. But I, I, I like Travel Column. Who do you like? Uh, maybe search results. Maybe because I I'm, I I'm always goes. I'm always searching stuff on Google. So might as well. Uh, Pick that one. Uh, yeah. But obviously, you said, you know, these are top three horses. So I, I should see them coming in. They're going to be the, probably the top three. They're, they're, they're superior to the other horses. If so you look I, at, so I, can you look at the odds. I can do box and trifecta with these three horses? I, I would. Okay, then done. I, I, are I, you going to do it? Because last time you gave us uh, winners, you, you didn't take no, it. No, I know. This year, I'm, I've already picked my horses and I'm going with. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm going with uh, Travel Column to win. Um, and, and, and the two horses that I mentioned right behind him, I'll, I'll box them in an exact and a trifecta. Uh, that's all I'll play. You know, it's, people don't really watch the Oaks that much. It's, it's, it's an afterthought compared to Kentucky Derby, but we do have a female, you know, Kentucky Derby. It's called the Oaks for the women. But let, let's get to the real, let's get to the real, real, real deal. The Kentucky Derby this year. Is it, as some are saying, essential quality is by far the best source. You have to understand, Essential quality is one, two point, close to $3 million, 2.2 and something. Nobody's close to that. The closest horse to that has won $1 million is Hot Rod Charlie. One, right at $1 million. So essential quality is the real deal, is the real horse. Do we say, as so many people do, okay, well, I'm going to try to beat him, or is he just so good that he's just going to run? Again, it's a Brad Cox horse. You got Lewis Saez on him, one of the top jockeys in the world. Brad Cox has two horses in this race. Yeah, he's also he's also got a horse that I like a lot. Man, uh, Brad Cox could go one too. Um, don't be surprised if Essential Quality doesn't win this race, and Mandaloon does. I was very high on this horse early. His last prep race, getting ready for the Kentucky Derby, he had already qualified. 
I didn't think they had him cranked up. I kind of thought they backed off. They came in third. They didn't win. And I said, hmm, is the horse not that good or did they, were they backing off a little bit? We'll see. Um, I think they didn't have them totally charge it up. Uh, I, I think Essential Quality has done nothing wrong. And there are those gamblers and bettors that say, without a doubt, Essential Quality wins this race. He's a superior horse. So, but what, I mean, what, what are your thoughts? You, I know we all know Essential Quality is going to be the probably three to one favorite. Beyond that, I think there's going to be some big odds in there where you can make some big money. You know, give me a couple horses that our audience would, you know, can look at it and handicap on going into Saturday. I know you all got going to have your racing forms or be at the sports book or maybe some of you are going to be right at the Derby. They're going to have, they're going to have people there. They're going to have a crowd. Yeah. So who's going to win? Who do you think? Well, you can't, you can't, um, who's going to win? You can't count out Bob Bradford when he's there and he's got a horse named Medina Spirit. That's, right. That's, that's going to be. Bob's always ready. If if he if he's got a horse in there, you've got to give him a fighting chance to win that, and he more more likely is gonna either you know at least place a show. Yeah. Uh, known agenda. Um, it's it's a good. Uh, we have a good trainer in uh, Todd uh, what, Pletcher. Yeah, Todd Pletcher, and, and and the best jockey in the world. Which which brother? I rather Ortiz Junior. Oh. Jose isn't nearly as good as that. Uh, hey. Jose, Jose not, is okay. Jose would not agree, but uh, no, nah, you know what? I think he would agree. No, I ran Ortiz Jr. is the best jockey in, in, in the world. I don't care Japan, Australia, Britain. I don't care. The best jockey in the world is I ran Ortiz Jr. And guess what? No one agenda has got a real shot, and Pletcher is going to have his horse ready. Pletcher's got four horses in that race. Um, he may set it up. He may do something funny to set it up, throw some horses to the lead. No one agenda isn't going to be far off the lead. See, this race is going to be speed. You're going to have three, four horses just go lights out to the lights out to the lead, and it, it's going to affect the race. But I will tell you this: I've seen it so many times, except for a few. If, if you're coming, if you're ten horses back, 11, 12 horses back, you're not winning that race. No, too much you got to be. You got to be in that face. first six, seven horses, and you got to be near the lead. And you got again. These horses don't haven't gone a mile and a quarter, and that's what people don't realize. A lot of these horses are milers, and they're miling the 16th horses. They're not mile and a quarter horses, and that's what you really got to look at when you handicap. How far can these horses go? What's their breeding? Does their breeding tell you that they can go one mile, that they can go a mile and a 16th? You got to remember, people forget this. Oh, I like this horse. Can they get the mile and a quarter? Can they go 22 and change, 21 and change to the quarter? Can they go 43 to the half? If you can't go those type of speeds, you're, you're going to fall so far back, you're not going to do it. And, and, and I don't see the closures. They will, this, nobody will close from way back in, into this race and win it. How do you, what, how but do you, it's going to go lights out. It's going to be 21 and change to the quarter. Um, what's your thought on like a horse uh, highly motivated? Uh, I mean, I like the horse. Uh, again, it's a Chad Brown horse, Javier Castellano. As, as, as all my friends know, as people know, I am huge on owner, trainer, jockey. Um, that is what I bet a lot. You, you, you look at the trainer, Chad Brown, one of the best in America, just a great trainer. Uh, Javier Castellano, again, an incredible jockey. The horse, I, you know, I know we don't have a lot of time left on the show today. It's just so many things going on. And, but I want to give, you know, our people enough to take a look at. But I, I the, Rock Your World is my horse. I, I'm going with Rock Your World. Um, John Sadler horse. Um, he's got Joel Rosario on it. Rosario is one of the best. He's a go-to guy when you want to win a race. Uh, I really, really, really like Rock Your World. I think Sadler's due to hit one. He trains for a great group of people, Ronis Racing, um, out of Southern California. That's some good owners, good people. Uh, Sadler's due. He's never won it. He's never gotten closer than the sixth. So Sadler has not won any derbies, but he's a great trainer that flies under the radar. He wins a lot of big stakes races, Breeders' Cups, uh, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with Rock Your World number one. I'm going with um, Known Agenda number two. And I'm going with Essential Quality number three. And I'm going with Mandolin, Mandaloon fourth. I, I want to give you a super fact of that. So, uh, you know, you can mix them up, exact as however you want. My, my top four horses in the race again are Rock Your World, Known Agenda, Mandaloon, and Essential Quality. You gotta have essential quality. Yeah, I, 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 he'll I, be in the top four. 
I and, think so. And, and again, the, 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 the top handicappers are saying there's no way he can lose. I'm, I'm going to say at least uh, for essential quality, I would put a win bet or, or win place or show bet on him uh, because – He will be the favorite. He's the favorite, and I, I don't think for the favorite is going to go – isn't even going to come in for it. He's going to be there. It's, it's, it's a good horse. He'll be there. So who who's your top three? Give me your top three. Um, I actually like Nona Gender. Nona Gender is gonna be my uh my one. Rock Rocky World is gonna be number two, and then for the third one, I'm gonna have to go essential quality just because I know that horse is gonna win place or show. Yeah, it's it's gonna be fun, and we could be completely wrong. You have your ideas. I wish you get back to us and say who you like. It's a few but days just, away. just so you know, give, give us, give us for, your win. For the record, Rick gave out the winner last year, and he didn't bet it. Most so, years. So though. you take you take his winner and make some money off of it, because I will. Yeah. Well, I like Rocky World. The, the 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 problem with it is is I don't know that it's a problem. He's probably going to be right up near the lead, uh, and we don't know again if he can get that mile and a quarter, but that horse is going right to the lead. Rocky World will be up front. It'll be top top three horses on the lead. Uh, can, it, can, can Rocky World set a pace and keep it? I don't know. Um, you know, Kentucky Derby's crazy. I just think a bomb's going to hit this year. I think, I think something out of the clouds is going to win, and what I mean by that, something 30 to 1, uh, 35 to 1. I, I just have this feeling this year that it's going to be a big bomb. Well, you uh, said something. Uh, like, I just really think that this you year. You mentioned that last week about uh, – with this derby, it was it was kind of open more than it was over the years. You know, despite all the, um, all the the experts are picking uh, essential quality. You know, yeah, essential they quality, really are. Essential quality right now is a two to one odds of winning, whereas you have uh, the next one right behind that is uh, Rocky World at five to one odds. So it is going to be bigger odds. The experts don't necessarily get it right all the time, um, and I can tell you, Rick got it right last time. So guess what? The expert didn't. The expert didn't pick it. So yeah. And that being said, um, Hot Rod Charlie. A lot of people are on him. Um, Super Stock, the Asmussen horse. People are on that horse. You know, like you had mentioned, uh, the Medina Spirit. Um, highly motivated. Uh, there's some horses in there that could really win this race. Mandaloon. So I'm just telling you my thoughts. Um, the, all those horses I mentioned, they'll all be in. They'll all be in the top seven or eight. Uh, I think there's these. Are, this is a good group, but in the end, essential quality could just be the best. Anyways, any other thoughts before we finish up with that? No, it's, uh, I think we covered we covered a couple of things. Baseball, uh, we covered, of course, uh, the NBA draft or the NFL draft, and then of course uh, this weekend, you know, our, our big sporting event. One of the things that yeah, we, we, we look, we look forward, forward to, which is the uh, Kentucky Derby. So yeah, well, good luck. Good luck, good luck with your plays. Well, we'll, our show next week, we'll talk about how we did and what we didn't do and what we did do. Uh, I won't be surprised if somebody on that lit, Kentucky Derby list wins that I didn't mention, but uh, I just think it's that kind of race this year. But I, I feel pretty good about what we're doing. I want to thank you all for watching the show, for liking us, uh, for watching us at WWDB TV and uh, the various places like Apple TV and, and Roku TV and um, YouTube. We thank you. We thank you for being, uh, you know, watching us, being our fans. We, we really, our fan base is growing. This show is uh, be, be getting a lot, a lot of attention now uh, around the country. And we're grateful. We're grateful for the viewers. Give us some of your opinions. Comment on it. Like it. We thank you for watching. Uh, we could talk a lot more about NFL Draft at Kentucky Derby, but we only have a certain amount of time. And we know eventually you all got to do other things. But we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough for being our viewers. We appreciate you, and we thank you. And good luck. Good luck with the Kentucky Derby. Make some money. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.